Hi! Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.TV. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to all our viewers around the world. And of course, this show is brought to you by Rex Education, USD Golden Cross and Saber Alumni Association, and the USD Alumni Association, Inc. This is Evelyn Sonko, your host. And of course, we have with us, and very privileged, we have with us Dean Henry Tenedero. Dean Henry, come start. Hello, good afternoon. Good, good evening, oh. na pala. Good evening. Oh, oh. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to all of you. Mabuti. Kaya nga, long time no see. Nice to be back here yeah. because we have a very exciting episode and a yes. very brilliant guest tonight. Yes, that's true. Ah. Oh, oh. Last time, aquaponics tayo. Pero kasi, alam nyo mga kaibigan, ngayon, ha, this month has been declared or proclaimed as the National Anti-Trafficking in Persons Awareness Month. O kaya tamang-tama, kasi din Henry ang ating guest galing sa International Justice Mission. Diba? Mahalaga talaga yung pag-uusapan natin, din Henry. Correct. Uh, our topic for tonight is very, very timely, relevant, at nakaangkop sa panahon ngayon. Napakahalaga. Kaya sa yung mga nakikinig sa atin, just stick around because you will learn so much and you will be protected. Guaranteed. Oh, yeah, yeah. True, true. Kaya nga, Dean Henry, oh, do me the favor. Please introduce our guest speaker. Or guest speaker, our guest. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Evelyn Sonko. Tonight, our guest is Attorney Alexandrino Malilin, or Attorney Alex for short. He is the Senior Manager for Investigation and Law Enforcement Development of the International Justice Mission. He is a graduate of the Bachelor of, Bachelor of Arts degree, major in political science from mm, mm, our, my, our very own, from the UST Faculty of Arts and Letters, an advanced ROTC course. He holds a Juris Doctor degree also from UST. He was a state attorney in the Department of Justice and was assigned at the Interagency Council Against Trafficking. At present, Attorney Alex assists enforcement officers in handling cases involving online sexual exploitation of children or OSEC. Welcome to Bridges, Attorney Alex. Araw po sa inyong lahat. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the Tomasian community sa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, and even outside of the country. I'm so glad po, and it's really a big privilege to be here po in this episode of Bridges. Hi po, uh, Doc Sonko and Dean Atenedero. I'm so glad to be with you today. Ako, good afternoon, Attorney Alex. Welcome to Bridges. We're so happy to have you with us. Naku, mabigat ang ating pag-uusapan ngayon, Attorney Alex. Ano? Medyo kailangan talaga mag-pay attention. Ang online sexual exploitation ng ating mga kabataan. Ang In short, OSEC yun. Tama ba ako, Attorney Alex? Please tell yes, us. Box, the, yes, box Yes, Yeah. Please tell us, about, uh, give us a background on this and then also maybe you can tell us about the International Justice Mission. Yes, Doc Soko, thank you po for that uh, uh, generous introduction and also uh, Dean Tenadero. So by the way, no, let me just uh, uh, explain to you what is IJM or International Justice Mission, the organization or the office that I represent and also uh, the, the, the place where I'm currently working. So IJM po is the largest largest anti-modern day slavery organization in the world and uh, it is based in Washington DC and has several field offices po no, uh, in the developing world so dito po sa Pilipinas ay meron po tayong dalawang field office we have the Manila field office and the Cebu field office and our casework focus po is yung online sexual exploitation of children or yung OSEC and uh, just to give you a very brief definition of OSEC ito po yung mga ranges it consists of different uh, ranges of crimes that involves 
child sexual abuse using online. So ito po yung mga cyber sex trafficking, child pornography, and even child abuse. And it, it also includes po yung live streaming of sexual abuse na nagaganap po ngayon and, uh, and lalo pa pong tumaas because of this pandemic. Live streaming talaga, Live streaming yes, ng uh, OSEC. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and oh. Uh, as we uh, we are now very uh, concerned with, uh, with our safety dito po sa pandemic na ito, but at the same time, maraya po sa ating mga kabataan ngayon ay hindi safe, no? hindi ligtas kayong lockdown dahil sa dami po na nare-report of uh, online abuse of children during this lockdown. And as a matter of fact po, the Philippines is at the epicenter ng ganito pong uh, crime ngayong pandemic. No? But at the same time, ang good news naman po is the Philippines also at the forefront of its fight against cyber sex trafficking. As sabi nga po sa uh, United States uh, 2021 TIP report or Trafficking Persons Report, ang Philippines po ay nasa tier 1 status. Ang ibig pong sabihin ay meron talagang significant efforts na ginagawa ng Philippine government to address this kind of modern day slavery. And uh, that's oh, uh, what I'm yeah. doing right now po uh, in my profession. Oh, nakakatuwa yan din Henry, di ba? At least so, din Henry, yan, meron uh, tayong ano, lumalaban. Yes. Sige din Henry. Correct. Yes. Go ahead. Napabalita, napabalita yan kung ilang beses na may mga nahuhuli at kinokonek ka nila, Atty. Alex, sa uh, kasulukuyang pandemic na nangyayari, no? yung mga lockdown. Dahil uh, pigil, pigil ang paggalaw ng mga bata, puro online. So doon nakakapasok yung uh, ganitong kasamaang, ay nako, ang hirap. So continue educating us, Atty. regarding this, uh, regarding the, the efforts we're doing to address this uh, heinous crime. Yes, sir. So okay, ayon po yeah, sa... May kinalaman, yes, may kinalaman ang pandemic dito sa pagtaas ng uh, ganitong klaseng kriminalidad. Ganun ba yun? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, sir, uh, sir Henry, and uh, ayon po sa National Center for Missing and Exploited Children or NICMIC as, as we call it, meron pong uh, 28% no, na increase sa mga narinig nilang reports involving videos, images of child sexual exploitation materials. Mula po sa 16.9 million noong 2019, ito po ay tumaas sa 21.7 million. At ganoon din po yung nareport ng Interagency Council Against Trafficking or ng IACAT, the primary body that addresses human trafficking in the Philippines. So, kung bago, kung meron po tayong IAPF uh, to, in, to implement yung mga health protocols sa pandemic, meron din po tayong IACAT or the Interagency Council Against Trafficking. And IJM po is an NGO member of that agency. And as sabi rin po, may talagang threefold increase of the reports na nare-receive po ng mga images, videos of child sexual abuse na from 400,000 po in 2019, ay meron na po tayo ngayon na 1.2 million images and videos that were received and reported sa kanila pong uh, office. So, makita po natin talaga na this is really a, a serious concern and at the same time, uh, based on the statistics or the study, the coronavirus lockdowns have contributed to this increase. Dahil po ating mga kabataan, ay, of course, we have access to the internet at homes. They're staying at homes. And then the mga traffickers din po have access to, to the children and to the people who are partaking or purchasing the mga offer of child sexual abuse online because of the lockdown. And nakalukot dito, uh, um, Dr. Sonko and uh, Din Tenadero ay meron pang ano po, no, yung um, most of the traffickers or the suspected perpetrators are their own parents. So sarili nila mga magulang ang gumagawa po nito. So yun po yung medyo that, nakalungkot na isang epekto ng pandemic. Yes ma'am. Napakalungkot Hello, yan. Yun ang, ano? yun ang nakaka... Yun ang tarumag-dumag dahil mismong mga magulang, kamag-anak, ang sila pa nagbubugaw ng mga batang ito. So, yes. Very sad, na, yes. No? Now, and then there is increasing that, Yeah, true, true. And then there is increasing statistics on this. From this data that you have, Attorney Alex, what insights did you get out of this uh, data, mga stats? Yes, there are three things po, that we have learned from this kind of uh, crime or range of crimes. So number one po, 
OSEC or online sexual exploitation of children is a global crime. Second, it is a global crime that requires a global response. And third, it is a technology-enabled crime that requires technology-enabled solution. So, pupuntahan ko po muna yung una. No? First, it is a global crime. So, makita po natin in this uh, illustration, uh, nakita niyo po yan sa screen, yung paggamit po ng social networking or social media sites. No? So, na naginagamit din po natin ngayon the, in, in our communications with our friends, loved ones, and even in our homeschooling or uh, right now. No? So, ganyan dito yung ginagamit na platform. And then, uh, the abuse materials are being sent No, from the source countries, katulad po ng Pilipinas, and to those uh, demand countries na more developed na uh, mga bansa. And then, yung, yung pera po, yung uh, money remittances ay napapadala rin po in the same uh, platforms that we also send money to our loved ones, friends, during this pandemic. So, ito po yung nangyayari dito. And kaya mahalaga po talaga no, na pupunta tayo sa pangalawa. No? First, it's a global crime. Second, kailangan talaga ng isang global response. No? Kailangan ng isang malaking global initiative against uh, this kind of crime kasi po uh, it involves po yung uh, uh, crossing of borders. So dito po uh, in, in this illustration uh, you can, we could see that ang pinakamataas po of course is in the United States which is 34%, 25% po sa Sweden at 18%, 18 sa Australia. So hindi naman po ibig sabihin na dahil mataas sa kanila ito mga demand cutters ay eh, masama yung bansa nila or hindi. No? Dahil ibig sabihin lang po yan na re-report na they have an effective law enforcement strategy to address this crime. And so we are receiving referrals from this country involving this kind of abuse. And after, uh, after that, our uh, Philippine local uh, authorities are trying to address, do, do the investigation and then surveillance of these reported OSEC referrals. So yan po yung uh, numbers. Yes, yung mga nauhuli, uh, quickly lang, anong ginagawa para lang malaman ng ating mga nanonood? Yung mga nahuhuli, anong ginagawa? Yes. So usually din, pagisimula uh, po kasi ang isang case involving this kind of crime through a referral. So meron pong referral na manggagaling sa isang international law enforcement agency. So halimbawa po, eh, Australian Federal Police. At meron po silang naaresto na Australian National na sex offender online dahil naka, nakita nila na meron siyang uh, child abuse material sa kanyang mga gadgets or na-report na siya. So, na-arresto po siya and they're able to track na rin nag-offer po ng mga child abuse materials na ito ay galing sa Pilipinas. So, that referral will be transmitted to the Philippines and then magkakandak na po ng investigation and uh, surveillance on that. And once they're able to monitor that and confirm that indeed uh, there are some people in the Philippines who were suspected to be engaged in this activity and they will now conduct a simultaneous rescue operations in order to rescue the victims or as we call it the survivors and then arrest the suspects once they, they, they will uh, show that meron silang offer online. So ang mere offer po kasi is already a crime of human trafficking. Hindi kailangan na actually ma-abuse yung mga kabataan uh, online. So the mere offer itself, if you offer someone online, you will already be liable at kailangan na pong i-rescue yung mga batang yon. Dahil hindi natin kailangan na aantayin pa na ma-abuse po sila. Kasi once it's, it's there in the internet, it's out there po. Hindi na po maalis yan. Oh, nga. Just so that is very sad. Now, when you said that those uh, percentages actually refers to referral, no? Which means there are cases which are not referred. And you are, you you suspect there are cases which are not referred. Yes, Tama ba? Oo. Tama yan. So, yes, ma'am. Tama. Mga po. So, in, that means, kapag ka nakakita ka ng percentages, ibig sabihin yan, yung percentage na yan, hindi nag... Uh, ang, ang, ang ibig lang sabihin yan, merong mga uh, ni-refer at effective ang kanilang tracing. Yun That's correct, Dr. Soko. Yes, um, yes totoo po yun. Tama po yun, ma'am. Yes. So, na-report lang sila kasi they, they, they were able to track it and nagkaroon po ng arrest or possible uh, investigation over those cases. So, na-report siya. Kaya, hindi talaga accurate or it's not even possible to know no, the exact number of the victims. And even sa, minsan po may mga ilang provinces in the Philippines that they're saying na, sa amin po, wala namang nare-report. So, they're very happy, no? Dahil baka mayaman yung probinsya nila or hindi mahirap. Pero, totoo po niya, not necessarily na walang nare-report. 
eh ligtas no po yung ating ano po doon no yung mga kabataan because as we could see ay po ay uh, online uh, platform and it is very accessible everywhere so pwedeng hindi lang nare-report or na-detect talk about uh, uh, geographics uh, attorney sa Pilipinas saan saan ano Luzon Visayas Mindanao talagang talamak itong uh, crime na ito So again, uh, sir, as we have said, it doesn't necessarily mean na may na-rescue in this area or madalas ang rescue in that area, ito lamak. No? So, pwedeng meron lang silang effective uh, law enforcement strategies and investigation in that place. Kaya maraming rescue operation in that area because yung local units nila na-trained, no? they're trained to handle online investigations and surveillance. So, nauhuli, no? but it's actually around the Philippines po, no? Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, there are a lot of simultaneous rescue operations being conducted. At yung, yung mga successful operations po, eh, dahil lamang sa effective law enforcement strategies, and not only that because of the effective ano rin, no? justice uh, functions functioning sa mga local, ano po, in, in the, those oh. local government units. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Kayo, so, at, um, visit, um, yes, ma'am. Oh, ang IJM yes, ay uh, actually present in Cebu and Manila. Paano sa Mindanao? Are you planning yes. to have also your field office there? Yes, ma'am. So that's a very good question, ma'am. No, So right now po yung IJM Manila field office is focusing on uh, assisting our government sa Luzon. So it involves po yung assisting provided to law enforcement agencies and even to the Department of Justice, sa prosecution naman, and even the DSWD. And then po yung Cebu Field Office naman po yung nagpo-focus sa Visayas and Mindanao. So combined na po yan, uh, mm-hmm. ang operations po ng Cebu uh, Field Office, combined po in Mindanao uh, and in Visayas. Ah, uh, I see. Is there concentration? Is there, con- is there concentration of cases like this in urban areas? Yes, ma'am. Madalas po, ay madalas din sa urban areas. It's because of the accessibility of the internet. So actually, ma'am, as of the moment, uh, it's re- oh, yes. So again, uh, in, in, even in the urban areas, may mga cities po na maraming operation, no? And it's not really because mm-hmm. of the prevalence of online abuse mm-hmm. in that uh, area, but again, because of the effective detection and ano po mm-hmm. yung entrapment in that area. So, syempre, yan po, yung Metro Manila is, of course, uh, we have a lot here in Metro Manila, even in Cebu, and even in uh, Dabao. So, yung isang malaking uh, case po recently is in Mindanao, no, involving several children and arrested, resulted to the arrest of the suspects who are even uh, their own uh, parents. Oh, so, yan po, yung kaya. Uh, po. Yes. So, so uh, malaga, ma'am, na, yes, sir. IJ, IJM is part of the OJ. So, uh, ang IJM po, uh, sir, is an international organization. Right. So, um, it's based po in Washington, D.C., but we are an NGO member of the Interagency Council Against Trafficking. So, okay. I used to work po before in the DOJ before I joined the IJM. But before po, nasa DOJ din po ako, and hindi ayakat. So, it's only an, well, it's an NGO representative of children sa Interagency Council Against Trafficking. Pero hindi po siya part of the Philippine government. Part of the organic, hindi siya NGO siya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and then, yeah, itong, yeah. Uh, may singit ko lang, uh, Attorney Alex, itong Philippine Internet Crimes Against Children Center or PICAP, nakalagay dito, you work hand-in-hand hand with PNP, NBI, DOJ, etc. So, interagency, right, collabor- interagency collaboration siya. Yes, sir. So, ito pong PICAC, sir, the Philippine Internet Crimes okay. Against Children Center. Yes, sir. The, the PICAC office is based in Camp Crame. So, dito po ay uh, n- nagko-collaborate po yung mga different international law enforcement agencies around the world, including the PNP and NBI. And uh, aksama rin po dito yung uh, isang NGO ko ng, uh, tulad ng IJM. So, so, dito po ang isa sa mga uh... big achievements po ng Philippines ito pong sa PICA kasi dito po nagko-collaborate no, yung mga different law enforcement agencies to receive ng referrals and also sharing of their expertise and also their uh, knowledges about addressing this crime, even technology. So kaya sabi nga po natin, no, in my second point, it's a, a global crime that requires a global response. And so because of that, uh, despite of this pandemic, uh, if, you, if, you, if you have seen a while ago yung statistics, they're able to pull no, napakaraming... Uh, rescue operations during this pandemic because of this uh, international collaboration and global initiative. So ang 
ang founding uh, members po niya nung, nung PICAP office or the PNP, the NBI Anti-Human Trafficking in, uh, in Persons Division, the Philippine National Police Women and Children Protection Center, and then may tatlo rin pong uh, international law enforcement agencies na nag-co-found po niya, yung Australian Federal Police, the uh, United Kingdom National Crime Agency, and the uh, Swedish National Police. And one NGO member, kasama rin po dyan, yung International Justice Mission because of our, our ano na rin, experience and uh, uh, er, uh, some uh, products or thought uh, products in, as far as this field of uh, modern day slavery is concerned. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. You so, it's accordingly. Okay. Go, go ahead, Dr. Yes. Song. Go ahead. No, no. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Dean. Dean Henry, you go first. So yung sa pala, uh, nakikita ko yung dynamics ng working relationship no. So very ano siya, kumbaga may sistema talaga. Pag meron kayo nakitang operations going on at kailangan sa lakayin, meron kayong mga protocols na tinatawag para alert ang uh, NBI, ang PNP, AFP para sa ganun talagang masampulan no, mahuli talaga no. Yes sir, totoo po 'yan no. Talagang ano 'yan. Uh, yun yung mga steps ng no? global initiatives, partnership with, between the local law enforcement agencies and uh, the international law enforcement agencies. Pero sa Maganda akin talaga, na uh, alam natin ngayon. Oo, oo. Maganda na nalaman natin ngayon, meron tayong uh, initiative, no? Siyempre, galing sa pamahalaan. Pero meron din tayong NGO na nakikialam sa ganitong klase ng kriminalidad. So, yung IJM is very active on this, very, very passionate about this. Now, when you have all of this data and then uh, you know the situation, uh, what interventions uh, are you doing? Ano yung inyong ginagawa to address the situations like that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Doctor Songko. So the intervention po that is being provided is so after the rescue, sabi kailangan po yon yung prosecution, no? Mahalaga po yung perpetrator accountability. Kasi kung wala pong uh, justicia or justice, then the the children or the survivors who were rescued will not realize that uh, what happened to them uh, was wrong. So, kailangan po talaga may managot sa batas. So, there must be a perpetrator accountability. So, aside from the support during the rescue operations for law enforcement officers or agencies, kailangan din po yung successful prosecution of the case. So, sa IGEM po, we have uh, lawyers, social workers, and uh, even uh, former police officers sa uh, United States to give us, to teach us, no, yung mga ano po, the technology na uh, ginagamit to address this crime, to have an effective law enforcement. Tapos po ng prosecution, meron din dapat yung restoration naman of the victims. So we have social workers na ano po na mga na nagvo-volunteer din in helping the DSWD to provide naman po yung mga aftercare uh, services for the rescued victims. So sa IGM po, by the way, uh, Doc Sonko and Dean Henry, marami pong ano Tomasian. <laughs> so I'm I'm a Tomasian and then our field office director is also a Tomasian. And then uh, even our VP and uh, and dahil pong lawyers from the UST. So, uh, so tatlo po kasi ang ano yan, no, pillars. So merong aftercare pillar or consisting of social workers. That usually most of them are also former DSWD social workers. So meron din kaming uh, prosecution pillar. So mga lawyers po. I used to be part of that team. But now I'm currently leading the investigations and law enforcement development team assisting the law enforcement officer. So, ito po, medyo nagamit ko po yung mga natutunan ko no, no, during my ROTC days. No, na, na, the, the value of effective uh, law enforcement and even yung, of course, yung servant leadership. So, kahit pa paano, mm. nagaga nagagamit ko po yung mga natutunan <laughs> during my college years uh, in, in this department. So, yan yung ginagawa natin intervention at uh, Doc Soko and Dean Henry, yung tatlong aspeto po yan, no, from the rescue, prosecution of the case, and then eventually in the restoration of the victims. So, oh, by the way, pala mag-add ko lang dyan. Doc, so ako add ko lang. The, the commanding general, or the chief of the PNP Women and Children Protection Center is also a Tomasian. He's a graduate of ano po, uh, uh, engineering. Wow. Commanding chief of the uh, Women and Children Protection Center. So, really, there are a lot um, from the Tomasian alumni who are really involved in this cause and really uh, 
dedicating their lives no to to protect our children especially during this lockdown ako we are so happy na, to know that nakakatuwa hindi ba ni Henry yes marami nang nagsasabi sa ating mga chat na very timely at relevant itong ating discussion uh, oh. thank you very much sabi ni attorney uh, Ellen Francisco presidente ng Law Alumni Foundation sila Dean Pedro sa lahat puro mga the timeliness of this and uh, siguro incidental na lang na namumuno rito mga Tomasino kasi talagang ano yun, yes. commitment, compassion. At hindi natin alam. Hindi ba? At hindi natin alam. Napakaganda because uh, probably we can still invite another one from them who can talk about the advocacy and the action taken by uh, many of them no in the field fighting this kind of uh, criminality. Diba? Din al uh Din Henry of question. Yes, sina uh, pinapa alam ni attorney Ellen Francisco na ang sanhi ba talaga nito ay kahirapan. Kasi mayro mga cases din mga urban areas na sabihin na natin na kaliwasa. So hindi mo iisipin na kahirapan, talagang kahalayan. Ano anong point mo ron attorney uh, Alex? Kasi palagi yes, natin, uh, palagi natin pinupunto ang ugat ng lahat ng kasamaan daw ay dahil sa kahirapan. Well, I personally beg to disagree kasi societal problem yan eh. Pero sa inyong pa pa palagay, Attorney Alex, what's your take on that? Uh, yes, totoo po, no? uh, Dean Henry. Uh, well, yung poverty po is one of the enabling factors among other things. Of course, this is also a moral issue. And uh, makita natin na sa Philippines, uh, talagang strong ating fight against it. And we are really strengthening, we are just strengthening no, these efforts. Kasi talaga sa Philippines, we are really convinced no, that this is uh, really uh, an evil thing to do. Masama ito at hindi ito mabuti sa mga kabataan. However, in other countries, no, hindi, wala, wala silang ganitong konsepto. No? And as a matter of fact, they don't even know na nangyayari ito sa mga bansa nila. No? So, well, poverty is, might be one of the enabling, enabling factors, but we were able to see na rin, no, sa ilang mga cases natin na uh, even po sa mga children in studying in private schools, regardless of social status or uh, yung kanila pong, even in the middle class, ay prone po talaga no, into this kind of abuse. As a matter of fact, minsan hindi lang po yung money, no? minsan may, meron pong element of deception sa mga ganito, no? na there are some uh, really individuals na take advantage po ng mga kabataan by using deception and then uh, they will be now exposed into this kind of abuse so hindi talaga yung poverty po is one of the enabling factor but it's not the only factor and as a matter of fact nangyayari din po ito in all uh, societies and e even to the rich countries and even to the the rich communities po ako alam mo attorney Ann, alex listening to you nadudurog ang puso ko kaya lang yung sitwasyon na yan, sa palagay ko, hindi naman pamahalaan lang no, ang kailangan gumalaw. So, sa tingin mo ba, ano ang pwede natin gawin bilang mga mamamayan sa sitwasyon na yan? Anong tulong ang pwede natin gawin? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, una ko, napakahalaga po ng isang supportive community no, to address this kind of crime. So, ang supportive community po kasi ay tumutulong din in, that not only in raising awareness, but seeing to it that this kind of activities are being reported. No? So, kaya mahalaga po na ma-report ma yung ating mga, mga, mga ganito, kung may na nabalitaan po kayo, and of course, yung mga, ano din, no? yung mga bagay na, uh, what do you call this, yung protect, cyber protection no? during this lockdown. Be sure that we always know the activities of our children at home. May access tayo sa mga social uh, media websites nila kasi po, uh, as, we, as we have said a while ago, pwede rin may element of deception or even yung mga taking advantage of their vulnerability during this lockdown. So, yan po yung siguro na magagawa ng ating community. And of course, the church is also playing a, a very important uh, role in on this. So, just ano lang po, no, last month, uh, Dr. Sonko and Dean Henry, we have the uh, Manila Prayer Gathering no, for this an interfaith. A prayer gathering for victims or, or survivors of human trafficking and online abuse. So lahat po yung umattend, ang CBCP po ay nagparticipate and even the different uh, denominations including the, the Muslim community also prayed no, during that uh, interfaith movement po against human trafficking. 
Oh, on, the human, on, on the human. On the human. Uh-huh. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Dr. Song. No, no, you first. Be on the human name. side, on the human side, uh, attorney, yung mga na, na-rescue nyo, na-survive, naging biktima ng three men. Yes. Can you recall any, any, any heart, heartfelt, uh, heartwarming testimony from these victims? Yes, um, talaga naka-encourage po, no, yung, yung kanilang mga testimonies after they, they became uh, survivors of this kind of abuse. So, narinig po yan during sa mga events wherein they're being invited and even leading no, those uh, people who are also uh, naging biktima ng OSEC no, or human traffic. So, meron pong uh, what we call the Global Survivors Network. So, ang nag-lead po dyan ay isa ring uh, former uh, or su- survivor of human trafficking. So, Nakita po natin no, paano nagbago yung buhay nila no, after they rescue. So, syempre, simula, uh, they've been very traumatized. No? Yung rescue mismo po ay eh, nakaka-trauma. Hindi lamang po yung actual abuse, but also the, at the time of the rescue, of course, the families will be broken, lalo na kung involved po yung parents nila. But the good thing here is, of course, the, the state has to step up and take uh, responsibility as provided for in the Constitution, yung parents' patria role of the state, wherein it will take responsibility as the parents' for the reintegration and restoration of the victim. At after po nung ganong proseso, ng aftercare process, magita natin how were they able to recover at maging victorious po no? after that kind of abuse. So may iba po sa kanila na malapit lang gumraduate ng law. So may mga ganun pong mga victims ngayon na previously na rescue or uh, sexual abuse victim. May iba naman po na they're able to uh, secure or rather have no, yung mga qualified adopted parents. So, may mga ganun din pong mga instances, pag lalo na po yung mga sobrang uh, baby pa or maliliit pa, that, uh, the DSWD is assisting in their adoption program so that they will have uh, a normal life and also yung mga educational uh, provisions aside from other needs po ng mga rescued victims. So, meron din po tayong ano dito, no? uh, Doc Soko, uh, yung video po ng isang survivor. No? So, I think uh, we can also play that testimony ang isa pong uh, video. So, her name po is si Charito. So, si Charito po. Ayan. Ayan po si Charito. I am a from the Visayas region in the city of Cebu and I work as a medical social worker. I am a survivor of trafficking and I am one of the founding leadership council members of the Global Survivor Network in the Philippines and have been in this position since 2019. I want to share with you why I decided to become part of the GSN. After my long and difficult journey to recovery, I decided to pursue studies in social work. During my college days, I spent my spare time volunteering at the shelter where I once lived. While volunteering, I heard story after story from survivors who were courageously walking on the path to recovery. During this time, I decided to get involved in a local survivor group in Cebu called SMART. This stands for Survivors Mentoring and Advocating for Restorative Transformation. I joined because I wanted to seek out ways of encouraging other survivors on their journey to healing and recovery. Listening and learning from the stories of other survivors motivated me to become an advocate, to speak on behalf of those who are trafficked and bring our voices together to be heard globally. Through my involvement in SMART, I became more confident in advocating and sharing my story and began to hope that my experience could have a bigger impact. When I heard about the Global Survivor Network, I knew it would help me to achieve this hope, and I believe that sharing my journey is one way to help an end to all forms of violence, especially sexual exploitation. I believe that we are more than our abuse stories. As a survivor, our stories are not just about the trauma or the abuse that we have experienced. We are living examples of restoration and healing. 
The Global Survivor Network is more than sharing our story of healing. We are a group of survivors who encourage one another through regular meetings and to prevent the victimization. We mentor younger girls and boys who are just beginning their journey of freedom. As a founding leadership council member of the Global Survivor Network, I am looking forward to witnessing each one of the beautiful people who are on this difficult journey to reach their full potential and inspire more survivors to become leaders and advocates. We use our voices and experiences together to educate the community and raise awareness about the realities of human trafficking and the real solutions to end this crime. My vision for the Global Survivor Network is for survivors all around the globe to know that they are not alone and that they are part of something much bigger. My message to all of you here today is that every survivor has a voice, a unique identity which deserves to be recognized and heard. Walk with us on this journey, support us, that our voices may be heard and we can give the life of freedom to the oppressed and trafficked. Join us in praying for the victims, that they would be found, rescued, and find healing on the journey to freedom. Pray with us, that the people behind the Global Survivor Network will have the courage to continue the fight against violence. This is our prayer, and we believe that with you, this can happen, so that all survivors may experience true freedom. Thank you. Yan po si Charita, Doctor. Yeah, sana nanonood si Charito. Charito, you are very <laughs> courageous. And congratulations. At hangang-hanga ako sa'yo kasi may courage ka to speak out so that your voice will be heard. At napakaganda ng iyong ginagawa. At ginagawa rin ng iba. Yes, we will journey with you. Ang tanong ko, paano sila nakakapag uh, paunlad ng kanilang grupo? ng kanilang pangkat na lalo na sa Global uh, global Survivor Network. Merong mga foundations na nagbibigay sa kanila ng tulong. Ganun ba yun? Yes, uh, Dr. Soho, totoo po yan. So, syempre, uh, ito rin po ay isa sa mga advocacies of IJM. So, we have the aftercare team, yung mga social workers po natin in uh, providing the programs for the survivors of OSEC. At meron din po, of course, in partnership with the DSWD. At marami din po other uh, international NGOs who are focusing din po no, on uh, children who are being abused. Hindi lang po sa women, no, but both sexes, no, both genders po are affected, no, regardless of gender. Uh, so, uh, by the way, ma'am, uh, in this crime po, eh, marami din po male victims. As a matter of fact, gukulang po true, yung true. mga male social workers. <laughs> so wala tayong male uh, social workers right now and sa po yung sa mga challenge no in in this kind of crime but the good thing here is that uh, marami pong mga programs for their uh, reintegration and restoration through this uh, different uh, prog uh, networks katulad po nitong Global Survivor Network so yan po yung mga iba sa Attorney mga Alex, yes. uh, Attorney Alex alam mo ba tumangtuwa sa iyo si Attorney Ellen Francisco the president of the Law Alumni Foundation Inc <laughs> Pinupuri ka niya. Nakutuwang-tuwa siya sa'yo. I'm so honored. Palagay ko no? kukontakin ka niya. Attorney Alex, uh, marami pa tayong magandang pag-usapan, pero time na kasi. What is your final uh, message to our viewers this evening? So, uh, thank you po, no, Doc Sonko and uh, Dean Henry. Three things lang po. Number one, let us be vigilant no, of, during this pandemic, especially uh, sa larangan po ng cyber protection. Kasi po, Again, I, I've seen our episode that uh, we, we were discussing the blessings no, of online learning, the technology. But at the same time, no, hindi po ligtas rin. It's not so safe, no, especially for children na no, na-expose po sa mga social uh, media websites and other uh, platforms. So, mahalaga, mahalaga po talaga na i-prioritize natin yung child protection. We, we see to it that uh, uh, alam natin yung mga online activities. Second po, uh, Ang, ang laban po against human trafficking and uh, even online sexual exploitation of children is a multidisciplinary approach. 
So hindi lamang po ito ay uh, role ng police officers or law enforcement but also all professions po ay merong part na pwedeng magawa. So like for example po, I'm also encouraging my fellow alumni in the UST Golden Cross and Sabre to be part of this advocacy. We, we, are, we came from different professions, may engineers uh, or uh, simple uh, mga mamamayang uh, nag-work lang, mga empleyado, but we have a lot of, uh, you know, we can contribute for uh, even the the particular work that we are doing. So, mahalaga po, no, yung mga uh, multidisciplinary approach, no, in, in this uh, uh, crime. And in third po, yung ating, ano rin, no, reporting. So, we can uh, report this, no, sa Ayakat Action Hotline po, sa 1343. And we can also uh, visit po no, yung ating social uh, media websites. So uh, right. in IGM Philippines where we can report no, any uh, uh, and any activities like this also, and also to our local police and even to the local DSWD as part of ano po, yung mga community referrals. So yun lamang po siguro aking uh, uh, encourage with, the, uh, with this thing. Maraming maraming salamat, attorney. Uh, Alexandrino Malilin, we are very proud of you, of the things that you have been doing. And of course, for also the other alumni who are in the same advocacy, in the same uh, uh, work that you have been doing. Congratulations to all of you. I know marami pa kayong gagawin. Uh, Dean Henry? Yes, thank you very much for the work that you're doing for the Filipino people and for the international community, Attorney Alex Manilin. The powerful message delivered by Charito, once a victim, now a victor, championing the cause of child protection, especially in the midst of this uh, pandemic, uh, gives us uh, the, the hope that uh, while cyber online thing is a, a, a whole high-tech thing, we don't forget the high touch aspect of human life. So napakaganda ng ating episode ngayon. Nakaka baka ano lang damdamin, di ba? Tayo si Kawawa mga totoo. 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 Kaya kailangan nating pasalamatan ang ating mga sponsors. Dean uh, Henry, can you do that? Yes, uh, pasalamatan natin. Uh, let me read. Uh, we thank the Rex Education and the UST Golden Cross and Sabre Alumni Association for sponsoring our show tonight. Thank you, Dr. Rodrigo de Mesa, the president of the UST GCSAA. Uh, Bridges can be watched anytime at Bridges.tv Bridges YouTube channel. To our fellow alumni, follow us on Facebook, UST Alumni Association, that Inc., or visit our website, UST Alumni Association. Support That's our right. alumni community exchange. Tomasian sellers and Tomasian uh, buyers meet. Contact us at our Facebook. To our alumni who like their product to be included in the tax exchange or purchase any from it, you may contact Mrs. San Juan, so UST alumni. So, thank you very much for this wonderful evening, Dr. Sonko. So nice to see you again, and uh, what, a, what a beautiful way to, to have Tomasian leading a very powerful NGO group, the International Justice Mission. May your okay, mission continue. And, yes, and just a reminder to all our alumni who are interested to join our ongoing digital poster-making competition on Kalika, Kapaligiran. This contest is sponsored by the Environmental Systems and Technologies, Intramuros Administration, Archon Architects, Equipaje Associates, um, Anino Design, Agus Media, Agima. This contest is open to all Tomasians. Ang deadline naman ay sa August pa. Support our advocacy for quality education. Donate a beautiful storybook entitled Cargasus to any public school of your choice. Contact Dr. Marilyn Cano at 0917-820-1103. At ngayong nalalapit na naman ang panahon ng bagyo, mabuti na ang laging handa. At tayo nag-aanda din, we shall have a bingo for a cost. Uh, 
This is for the our disaster response. Tickets are now available with the president of your alumni association. Please do not hesitate to contribute 500, 500 lang po, for which you will reserve a, uh, receive a card that you can play several times. Great prizes awaits the winners. At kasama rin dyan ang raffle draw. Diba? Very exciting ang mga prizes. May bingo na, may raffle pa para sa ating mga Tomasino. Thank you to the CBRC administration and staff. Dr. Dean Henry? Okay, thank you very much. Remember this, here at Bridges, we do not build walls. We build connections, connections of people and knowledge. Thank you very much. And here at Bridges, we build bridges of faith, bridges of hope, and bridges of love. Thank you very much for joining in and uh, uh, staying on, uh, listening to us, watching us. Thank you very much. Have a great week ahead. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Mabuhay. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko, at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.tv.